ahead and get rolling. Honor of everybody's time. I know there's some time conflicts <coughs> for later, so we will need to try and get done at 5:30 today. Um, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Some of you have got to see me for year after year, and Jill got to spend half a day with me the other day, so I apologize for having to spend any time with me. It's always a bad deal. Uh, I figured we have a few new folks. So probably introductions would help so that everybody knows whom everyone is. And while you probably all have a pretty good idea who I am, I'll start. I'm Marty Nice, I'm Executive Director of HR and Operations. I'm Michelle Caudill, board member. Lisa Miranda, business director. Uh, Luke Weens, uh, freshman English mostly. <laughs> Jill Becker, special ed at the middle school. Liz Crummins, a librarian at Northern Hills. Uh, Sarah Everson, K through six, multi-level teacher at Northern Hills. Jane LaDuke, special ed at Elmont. Mike Holt, special ed middle school. Donna Street, special ed Northern Hills. Awesome. Uh, I figured the- Marty. Yes. And then for those who don't know, um, Lindsay Buck is yes, our new- I should have said, I okay. should have yeah. <laughs> Lindsay, come on, tell everybody. Oh, I'm Lindsay Buck. I'm the new capital unit serve director, so I support the team. Absolutely. Awesome. Welcome. Um, we'll just get, get rolling in the best effort to efficiency with time. Uh, and I think we've done this the last couple of years. I try to always make this one of the first things we do is uh, overview of the budget. Um, and I don't want to get too deep into it, but uh, new money estimated from the state, in anticipated increase in revenue of roughly $985,000. None of that's dialed in exact just yet. Uh, I will try to have that exact number for you guys when we meet next Tuesday, okay? That way you kind of have an idea. Breakage, um, if, if we could get people to stop leaving. Yeah, do you know how many we have right now? Yeah, Out, there's, not there's, higher? There's a, there's a, there's a chunk, and, and that makes it hard on breakage, because I can't, it, it looks like breakage is great right at the moment, because there's some that we're not filling, and when I do that spreadsheet, well, that whole salary goes in there. Well, we know that's, or certainly hope that's not gonna be the case. So that's, that's still a moving target right now. Uh, I do want to talk to you a little bit about additional costs for fiscal year 24, which is our next year. Property insurance is anticipated to increase roughly $200,000, and that's my estimate right now. We have not seen that. Um, originally scheduled to have a meeting tomorrow with, no, yes, tomorrow with those folks and they have moved that meeting to June 8th. And as uh, is always a little bit concerning, they said the volatility of the market for property and casualty insurance is why they're doing that. Uh, but having talked to them earlier this year, they were anticipating roughly a 20% increase is what they anticipated in property and casualty insurance. Uh, adding a column, will cost anywhere from 120 to 350 thousand dollars roughly that's really going to depend and we'll hammer that out and we'll figure that out that's that's all right but it is it is an additional cost step and column uh taking the average and looking at what it looks like right at the moment right around 226 thousand dollars uh health insurance <coughs> we had a higher number of claims this year than last year not what I was hoping for. I haven't seen the final amount on the number, dollar amount for claims, but I know that it did not come out the way that I was hoping. Um, a year ago, I know that you guys heard me say there were four claims that totaled three million dollars. One of those claims was a million and a half, and that fell off on September 1st, which was a good thing for um, and that was part of how when they originally, the original rate that they gave us was 41.5%, how we were able to get it down 
2016. Uh, and when I say that, remember, I'm talking about the total dollar amount on the bill, not individually broken down by options and, and all those things. Um, I will tell you I'm a little concerned because I have not been able to get Blue Cross Blue Shield to send us the initial rate yet. Typically, I get that the first two weeks in May, and I have requested a meeting with them for next week. Again, it all boils down to how many claims do we have and how much do the claims cost. And I can't tell you all of that just yet. Um, I, I think we would be very interested in adding another $30 per month towards the plan uh, from the district. That would take it from 460 to 490. That would be an additional cost of roughly 144,700. Uh, just food for thought: uh, each increment of $100 per cell costs roughly 32,500, give or take. So, if you did a $500 per cell increase, that's 162,500. If you do a $1,000 per cell increase, that's 325,000. That's not to say that's what it would be. It's just to kind of give you guys context and, and, and where those dollars can be spent. So let's get into some stuff where we get some clarification and make sure we're all talking about the same thing. Uh, discretionary leave. Seeks to increase the number of discretionary days. Do you have a specific request or just it's kind of a moving our usual that we've been doing. <laughs> yep. Um, make it easy. I mean, this last year we went, we kind of flipped it. So, um, you know, we went from having five discretionary and seven sick to having seven discretionary and five sick. Um, and we would like to just make everything still discretionary. Um, you know, as we've talked about before, we do not, um, you know, necessarily need, want to see, like, the buyback increase, because um, before you could only sell back, like, when a long time ago, you could only sell back a max of 10, because your personal didn't right. count. You know, we're not interested in seeing the buyback increase at all, um, just to have it all discretionary. So the proposal would be uh, to move to where all 12 days are discretionary. discretionary. But you could, I mean, we could keep the buyback the same. So we could still say that you could only buy back or sell up to 10. What is the benefit for you if all are discretionary versus the way it is? Um, honestly, I, I, I I think just so that we like we have a number of teachers who have who need to use more days and they are sick. Um, my daughter's in tennis and tennis meets start super early or they're all day. So if I want to go to the full tennis meet, I've got to take the full day. So and it's all like within a six, seven week period. Um, I could use four and a half or five discretionary days just going to my daughter's tennis meets. Who plays for semen? Yeah. She's a semen athlete. So I have that. Well, um, so that leaves me, you know, this year it left me two. Okay. Um, we had a family wedding out of state. So there's another one. Um, it's just like random things that come up and sometimes people use them and sometimes, you know, they may need to use them for sick, but if it's discretionary, then it doesn't really matter what you're using them for. Okay. I mean, yeah, I was just curious. But then that also gives you more sick if you have a... No. No? No. Hmm. Just it stays the same. The amount of days would stay the same. It's just... No, but I'm saying if they're all discretionary... Could you not use 12? So I would, no. So I would assume that what you would do was that it would, when you would put it in, 
the sick would go away. You would just put in leave. So it wouldn't be discretionary. It wouldn't be sick. It would just be leave. So you would put in a leave day. And so you would use your 12 so the term, leave the days. Term correct. Correct. Would change. correct. Yeah. yeah. So you would just use your 12 leave days for, okay. like, that's what you would do. Thank you. Yeah. To wish an incentive. Association seeks to increase the amount of teachers receive and or number of hours teachers can submit or reimburse. Yes. So um, currently the tuition incentive hasn't changed in, I wouldn't even care to guess how long it is. Um, it's been quite some time. Um, I was wondering, wanting some information from you guys. Um, right now the way that we work tuition incentive is that there is the pool of money and people put in for to submit for their you know to help for tuition reimbursement and it, you get a max of so much money per credit hour um, if the there's enough in the pool how often is there not enough in the pool like how often is the pool larger than what we need and i don't want to don't don't pin me on this but i don't think at least since i've been here i don't think it's ever been so, I would like to see our other smaller districts around us that are willing to pay quite a bit of money for teachers to go and get their masters. And we feel like that is one place that our district is lacking in helping retain teachers, is that helping pay for that tuition to go and further their education. Right now, at four hours, <coughs> Most people who are going for either recertification or their masters take that in a semester or more. What's our total, uh, or what's the reimbursement rate and the number of hours? It is. It's $100 a credit hour up to four credit hours a year. It's 125. It's 125. Yeah, 125 yeah. okay. 125 up to four hours. Yeah, so a person can get up to $500. And this is just a question. I don't know if, if you guys, any of you know. I, I have wondered this. Was the four hours, because the four hours seems like a strange number to me. Was the four hours because a lot of times that's what it takes to get recertified before you get to so master's? Mary might know, but it's been four hours since before I started so doing negotiations. Yeah, so I it's... Just, yeah. And that, and that neither here nor there, that's just, a, I didn't know somebody might know that one or, or not, but that's okay. No, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, retirement benefits. Association seeks to renegotiate or to negotiate and add board policy GBQR retirement benefits to the negotiated agreement under item 12, retirement benefits. Correct. So currently the retirement benefits there are totally under the board policy. Correct. So they can kind of just change at a whim. Um, the board could decide this year that the retirement benefits could change and teachers who have been here for 25 plus years, all of a sudden their retirement benefits could go down. They could go up. They could go down. Um, I th we felt that by putting it in contract and not just as a board policy that since it is a benefit it would allow more stability or even perceived stability for teachers who are looking at our district plan time association proposes adding language to clarify plan time and travel time for traveling itinerant teachers. We just want to make sure that our teachers who travel, their plan time is not grouped with their travel time. Separated. They are separated from. Counted separate. Correct. I've been a traveling teacher. Yeah, it's as as someone who's been a traveling teacher, if you 
not if you do not have dedicated plan time within your day to make sure that you're having time for both buildings because you could be teaching I mean in one building I was teaching K through five and then another building I was teaching seven sections of first grade um, that's not this district but um, it, it's it's a nightmare to try to have to plan for a second building at your first building. So that's really a big part of the rationale into it. But you can't plan in your car on your travel time either to make sure that they are getting their travel time and plan is not when they're driving. So is there a so need clarification, just making sure. So if you have a plan time of an hour that and it takes you to travel 15 minutes, that that 15 minutes isn't coming out of the hour, Correct. right? It's just right on. Correct. And is there a set amount? Now? So our contracts, our contract says what a minimum plan time is. So a minimum plan time is forty minutes, minutes a day. Okay. Um, and, and that goes for the traveling teachers too. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Supplemental addition. Association proposes adding a supplemental. So we might be proposing two, but definitely one for right now. Um, Vikings United is Keisha sponsored, and every other Keisha sponsored activity has a supplemental. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's really great for our students with special needs. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Extra duty pay. Association proposes extra duty pay for non Keisha activities and clubs. So, right now, as far as I know, at our secondary level, the only teachers who are getting money for extra duty or for a club or, is, or an activity is if it's Keisha sponsored. I know we have folks that turn in extra duty form. But that's, okay, so that that's my question. Is so, like, does Key Club or Key Club or, help me out here, please, high school folks, Chess Club, Viking Brew, Viking Brew. Well, FBLA is sponsored. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there, there are a variety of clubs at the high school that many of our faculty sponsor and um, are asked to we're asked to get kids involved in the buildings and can you sponsor this? And then a lot of those meet outside of the school day and the teachers are volunteering for high school. Let's do this. Let me check with Lisa and we'll do some research on it. I know we have some that do, but I don't know. I don't know which ones. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know at the elementary level, we were told that if we're doing a club, that we can go ahead and submit for those extra duties. But I wasn't sure if it was has been the same at the secondary level, oh, both, like it's both middle hours, school so. and high school. But yes, only, only if it's after, after. Yes, only if hours. they're meeting well, after school hours. hours. Right, yes. Right. I mean, yeah. so it's just during the day. So if they're yeah. doing just their meetings during the day and they're on duty, then no. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll look and see. Okay. We'll find out. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. Uh, hours of work. Uh, the district uh, suggests 15 minutes added each day with the rationale to help increase student academic performance. I know you guys have seen that before. I'm guessing you don't need me to probably labor that one. We, 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 we still are just kind of wondering. What Why? and what that might look like? Well, what, no, I don't know the, the what it might look like. The why would be because of academic performance. It gives 15 extra minutes to teach. I think that's kind of an important thing. If you have 15 minutes more to teach a kid, I think you could probably learn more. Well, the only, okay, so 15 minutes sounds like a lot until you break think about, like, you break it out into classes. And over 100. But it's like, yeah, two minutes for class. Well, it depends on how it's 
set up. I and don't, I don't, I, I don't have the answer. It's not 170 days. Well, the number of days we have students. No, but I mean, okay. Right. It ends up being like five yeah. extra days of teaching. Uh, 15 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes, 170. Right, but I mean. We right. did the math. I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt. We, we did the math to see how many like seeming extra days of um, education an additional 15 minutes would provide. Um, a, give it over the school year, and it ended up being something only like a, an extra five days of. Well, it's five days, yeah. but that means also we would want to start looking at an increase of five days of salary. Of pay for salary. Mm -hmm. Preparation time. The district suggests changing the wording, current wording, to 250 minutes per week as a way to create more uniformity and consistency regarding planning time. Okay, that is the big why. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, a part of that is um, I, I have heard from different teachers over the course of the last couple of years that they feel like there is some inequity between elementary and um, secondary. And they ask why, why it's not consistent now. Of course, my answer is always, well, it's 40 to 50 minutes. Um, and I think part of it would be they would ensure that everybody gets at least 50 minutes over each day over the five days. Uh, but 250 minutes a week guarantees you that you're going to get uh, at least as much time as you're getting now and probably more if you're only getting So why time. not just change it to 50 minutes a day? You already have it. No, it says forty. Forty minutes. Okay. So why don't why don't we just why don't we just change it to fifty and knock off the forty? Fifty in there, yeah. No, but why don't we just change it to fifty and knock off the forty? Well. Okay, so here's just here's the worry. Here's the worry. We can argue more about it down the road. Here's our worry. Okay. When when reading through this, is on a week that is not five days. Right. It, if you're grouping it by week, then contractually, they would need to, teachers would need to have that Absolutely. amount of time per week. That, that would be so, a good point, and that may be the clarification. Of the, the other concern that we have is that by going by week, in some cases, it could allow principals to schedule where teachers might not have a plan for three days and put all their plan in a big chunk. So the principal schedules when your plan time is? The correct. principal schedules every, yeah. Correct. Yeah. On, at, in every building? It's yes. kind of different. Well, well, it's different at the secondary. And yes. I'm going to speak middle school. It would be a challenge to, I'm not trying to take plan time away from anybody, but I teach 46 minutes per class. So where do we make up that additional four minutes every day when my classes are 46 minutes long? If we make it 50. Like, I see what you're saying. Because you, my plan is one class period. And my class period is 46 minutes. Okay. Okay. But grade schools, elementary is different. Correct. They have, they don't, they don't want to build. They're not like us. <laughs> I, mean, no. like, I mean, they're not. So... Every building is unique completely. Uh, <laughs> column additions. Um, obviously, we have a good random understanding that we agreed to make the MA60 ES PhD to the salary schedule, and we started on that a little bit. We were on that. And that's, that's kind of where we're at. Now, my hope for next week is that we'll be able to bring it. Uh, potentially a breakdown of, of costs so that you guys can can help participate. We always have a finite amount of money, right? And it's just a matter of where do we put the money. And you guys should be part of that discussion. That's okay. That's what we want. And just as I mentioned, with some of the things that are kind of givens, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and Guess that you guys, you know, anticipate to have column seven. Um, you know, you're, we, we have a new column that we're going to add. Uh, there are 
are some of those things to keep in mind that are already going to say, you know, call the steps 226000 If we spend $200,000 on uh, adding a column, we're already up to 446. That's half of the available funds that are there. And keep in mind that we it's not just teachers, that it's also all those folks that are hourly and everything else that need to get paid and probably deserve raises as well. I'm going to guess that each one of you finds the pair is important and food service and bus drivers and everything else that we have. So it's always a challenge and my hope is that I will have something that you can take a look at and kind of see well, what would it look like if we break it down in different ways. And then that way you guys can, can see and offer suggestions. Kind of gives us a few more days to potentially have a little bit closer idea on breakage and also a better idea on the uh, anticipated amount of good money. I want to make sure that we've got that dialed in so we have exactly what we we'll think it is going to be. Do the teachers, do you have a an idea of how much, you know, say it is the 985, you know, or how you want it to look. And this compare. is the first time we've seen the 985. So, no. so you haven't discussed that at all. Okay. And my hope is that it comes in a little bit more than that, but yeah. I wouldn't anticipate it being a whole lot more. Um, okay. And really, this gives us a start. Is there anything that I missed from the notice letter? Because it's always possible. I'm old and don't always catch everything. Or anything else that you guys <coughs> that we need to know or think about so that we can be prepared to come back and start truly chopping wood next week. Um, a couple. <coughs> Those are the ones that, that we met, but we have all copies of those. Like the I think I only have it digitally. Okay. The, the multiple proposals for the, the additional column. Um, right, that's yeah, sure. um, just to clarify, when you put the adding thirty dollars a month towards the, towards the health insurance is one hundred forty four seven twenty. Does that include every person in the district that takes the health insurance, or just it, it would be the certified staff? Right, it, it would be everyone. Okay. Everyone that currently has it, or just if it everyone would be everybody that's take on the plan. Okay. Currently, currently, whether they right. are right. teachers or support staff or admin. Right, I can't, and that they go I up or that may go down. Just clarification. It depends on enrollment, and that won't happen until. Um, so uh, at the end of our notice letter, we asked for a few different things. I didn't know what the, where we were on the rest of those I know items. We're, we're still waiting on the audit uh, that has not made its way to us yet. And there was one other thing, it seems like, ESSER. Mm -hmm. Was that the other one? ESSER expenditures, budgeting, and balance. Uh, and we won't get that to you. Okay. I don't. But I don't have to do that one. Just for clarification on the retirement benefits, you don't want any wording to change. You just want it to go from board to contract. Oh, okay. Is it that they requested? I... The, a copy of the audit oh, okay. and a copy of the ESSER 
expenditures and uh, Okay. I just wanted to write it down. Yeah. Thank you. And the current year's SO66. Which you should have. Yeah. As Tuesday, 4.30, uh, from my childhood, same bad time, same bad channel. So uh, we'll be here, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to have a few more things. We'll see if we can. I think it'll help you guys if you can see, here's the dollar amount that we have to spend, and here's what it would look like breaking it down. But you uh, won't have that meeting with Blue Cross before then. My hope is probably not. I, it it takes them a week, thing. right? It takes them a week to just respond to my email. And how are you looking anywhere else? We can't. That's what I always do. That. Well, I wait for the rate first because that's the first thing is. I know we're hesitant to leave, and I know, but it's yeah. just like. And and I will throw this out to you guys. Uh, one of the things that we could consider, I don't know it. it Maybe I'm alarmed unnecessarily, but when they're dragging their feet like this, it makes me think that they don't want to leave with me because I'm, I don't give Christmas cards to the Costco Shield, right? They don't particularly care for me. Um, and I would tell you that my anticipation is that it's going to be, I would guess at least what it was last year from the 16 to 20 percent range. That's, uh, but that's just a guess. I don't know until I see it. And that's the initial one. That's a good point. That is a well, the point. initial last year was 40. 40 right. Yeah. The initial says 40, yeah. 41 and a half. But um, yeah, they got to show it to me first, you know. But as I hope you guys know, every time it comes in ridiculous, I make a point that we go out and bid it every Last year, the next closest bid uh, ended up being 19.5%, which doesn't help us. Now, I will tell you, and this is just something food for thought more than anything else, we offer four options. Some of the district that offer fewer options will get a different rate. But I, I think our folks like that being set up that way. Mm -hmm. Having that $500 deductible, which they don't offer to anybody anymore, we've kind of been grandfathered in in that regard, uh, is a nice thing, but that's also part of what we're paying for. Um, and, and keep in mind, I don't, we don't negotiate for what they're doing specifically as far as how much they cover, the insurance covers for whatever and all that stuff. That's all through uh, hospitals and doctor providers and all that stuff that we don't have anything to do with that. We just, I can tell you that when I have looked at, and I keep in mind I'm not an actuary and I am not a insurance person, but when I have looked at that, I see that our number of claims have gone up and the amounts of claims didn't drop the way I expected them to. So what that tells me is we have some claims that even though they, we had the one that was huge, somewhere we have made up for that plus. I just don't know because I don't I don't need it. I don't, you know, that's why we have insurance is so that it takes care of folks when they have issues and we want to offer that. Remember, the district the, we do this as a benefit for you guys. Uh, we don't make any money at it. Uh, it's sure not fun. With them, with, with me, if you'd like. I don't know that you enjoy that any more than I do. Um, but, but hopefully, I, in answer to your question, Jill, I doubt that I will have it. Okay. I, I mean, because it's a big. Right. And, and there's no reason they can't yeah. just send me that yep. and then be set up a meeting. But they have been reluctant. And I have gotten the indication that it's because they're concerned of what our response is going to be. 
and they know that the last few years I have made it a point for us to go out and bid other places. So now this is purely me looking at the tea leaves at the bottom of the cup. I anticipate why they haven't done it is they're trying to shorten the window of time that we have to get the bid out for other companies. I get asked every year why we don't join with the state. Is it correct? Right, yeah. and we can and we can check. But I will tell you, it's just like I, I I tried to get us to be involved in a pool last year that would be fifteen or twenty districts, and because of our claims, we're not eligible to be part of that. <laughs> I don't know about the state, but I'll find out. That's a good question. Now, once you get your numbers, are we still using the as a KSB or whatever to help negotiate that down? Oh, yeah. Yes, we have a guy that, that is, I'm telling you what, if you want to talk insurance, he's going, and I'm just telling him, this cat loves it. And I sit there and I think to myself, he's a, he's a smart guy. Sometimes he just exhausts me just talking about it. Um, is he a Blue Cross? Is he Blue Cross? Does he, does he have a Blue Cross plan? He does. <laughs> but he has Blue Cross in Kansas City. He does not have Blue Cross. So yeah. There you go. Um, can I go back to hours of work real quick? Sure. Um, so, if the day increased by 15 minutes, what, between now and next week, could we look and see what that would look like for sure. classified staff? Because our secretaries would be on duty, custodians, paras, because that would be an increase in costs. Yeah, yeah. And where is where would those minutes go? Uh, well, I'll be honest with you, I, we haven't gone too far into it because you guys have been pretty adamant that you're not interested to this point. Uh, there, there's a rationale behind it because we want if we gain five days for the instruction over the course of a year by you guys' calculations. But if you're just adamantly going to reject it, which you've done the last couple of years. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to spend hours coming up with schedules and stuff like that until there's at least a modicum of interest on these guys' part to truly consider it. Now that, I mean, that may sound bad, but it's the truth. Liz, you should know, I'll be honest with you. I don't always like it, but it's the truth. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it if you guys are just going to outright reject it. If you consider it, if you think so, we'll put a pencil to paper and we'll figure it all out. So did you do that last year? I felt like no. You guys took it off. We took it off. Okay. Yeah. okay That's a couple of years. Good question. Can I'd like questions? to see what it would look like. You know, the concept sounds mm -hmm. good, but like see you guys, you're kind of. Yes. Yes. schedules, but I think what we had asked was, has this been discussed with principals? What would it look like for their schedules? Right. Have we right. checked with Rana? Yeah. What would her busing? We have enough trouble getting people to drive buses right. now. Yeah. Well, just didn't when it is. I mean, and would this only affect K twelve? Would this also affect pre K? Because right. little bodies. I mean, speaking as someone who teaches big bodies but little minds. I don't know that our that our littlest people could maybe handle an extra 15 minutes because by the time they get on the bus, they're done. I mean, I'll tell you. Well, I don't know if my senior. I was going to say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm in the middle school for a day. Yeah, I don't mean, yeah 345 but, comes around for my people and they're done. clawing at the ceiling. Right. I'm just trying to remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I keep looking into it a little sure. bit and seeing. That's all I got. Okay. Okay. Next Tuesday, 4.30, right? 4.30, right here. Oh, all right. Um, okay, so to clarify, we didn't live stream this one recorded, right? Correct. Okay, so it will just go up tonight, tomorrow. What's the plan? Tomorrow. Okay. 
Um, could we get a link sent out to teachers so that they can have that yeah. there? And we're just okay. going to do the whole meeting because I know like the board meetings, we don't do like the public comments and things yeah. like that, but we're doing the whole meeting. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you.